Hey, thanks for tuning into Sin's Workshop. So today we're going to be talking about On Wings and Ash by Joe Holloway. Um, it was one of those books that I, I didn't really love, but I didn't really hate either. I just think for a novel, you know, that takes place in the span of a day, it's more of a novella, you know, it's really only 129 pages, I believe it was, um, but it honestly wasn't memorable, unfortunately. Now, that's not to say it was poorly written. I think it was written well. I just think the plot, uh, the story, wasn't executed as well as it should have been. I mean, this is a novel that could easily spin off a second novel or even a third novel. You know, I think there's more that could be told from the story because there's lots of loose ends within it. Now, I think one of the issues is, you know, that opening that opening uh, chapter prologue, it introduces the picks, but it doesn't really tell us um, what the picks are. You know, this novel takes place um, in ancient Greece with Spartans and... Um, you know, part of what captivates the reader is the, or what draws the reader in is this idea. You know, the novel does market itself as Greek Roman mythology, except there is no, there there is no Greek Roman mythology. I think that was probably my what. It, that's probably what disappointed me the most. You know, you're telling readers, you know, in your blurb, um, Greek Roman inspired story. That's what you're telling readers uh, that they can expect. But you have these beings that are the picks. You would think they're ki- they would kind of be the gods, except you know, they're preparing for the festival of Hades, and the picks can only talk to certain individuals, and he's questioning everything about this Hades. He's just like, oh, I'm not too sure about that, but okay, whatever you want to believe. You know, so you're kind of already losing me as a reader, you know, and as a fan of Greek mythology by kind of getting away from that um, when it was something that you're kind of promising in your premise of the story, and I really think that's ultimately where a lot of my disappointment kind of stemmed from, you know. So, if you're going to read this book thinking, oh, ancient Greek, maybe there'll be Greek mythologies, uh, that's, y- you will be disappointed, because I was um, disappointed in that. There's another thing with the pics, you know, the opening chapter. The pics are talking about a, about a prophecy, except it's not really clear what this prophecy is. I want to know what the heck this prophecy is. You know, I have no idea what this prophecy is. So I have no idea what these um, mystical higher being creatures, beings are even talking about. And as the story goes on, you're following Alessa and... I mean, you think, okay, does this prophecy have something to do with her? She can talk to the picks um, who can take, who share the minds of animals, you know. She's talking to them, and it sort of doesn't make her really memorable. You know, she has to keep it secret. She's not that charismatic. I will say that she is a very headstrong character. Um, Alessa is very headstrong. I did like that about her. But other than that, you know, and her ability to talk to the pics, uh, she's not very special. I mean, her mother can talk to the pics, too. So it's just something, it's a genetic trait passed down. Um, Sometimes it skips people, sometimes it doesn't. It has to do something with, um, actually, I'm not quite sure why they can hear the pics. I'm sure it's mentioned, but to be perfectly honest, I've already kind of forgotten because it's, If it is mentioned, it's a very small detail, and it's mentioned only in passing, which is another issue I had with this novel, you know. There's a lot of things that could have been done with the pics and Alyssa and their relationship, and I feel like the novel falters on that, you know, kind of... uh, It 
kind of it doesn't really build that dynamic up it doesn't really build up this fantasy uh element it doesn't build up the intrigue uh between them now as far as point of views go um the novel really does function in first person i don't have a problem reading first person i read first first person a lot of the time my issue is sharon you know he is not necessary his point of view is not necessary to the story i think what holloway was trying to do was to establish that he does love alessa but we kind of already know that from their interactions and their dynamic with with one another you can clearly see through Alyssa's point of view that these are two characters that are deeply involved emotionally with one another you know they care deeply for one another and there's just a lot that you know social class standing that keeps them separated so we don't really need to see his point of view it doesn't add anything to the story you could skip it and you wouldn't miss a beat honestly that's one thing you know you have perspectives that are unessential in this story that kind of drag it out and you know at 130 pages this novel was a little tedious to read because it did feel dragged out um then you have Alessa and um the pics that she speaks to who is you know he's inhabiting a body the body of a goose now i think that's really charming i think it's really interesting i think it's really fun uh her talking to a geese a goose however there are times where it's a little confusing i find it a little hard to follow sometimes they're all saying i i i i'm like okay who's talking i would have to reread pages because I would be like, oh, whose perspective am I supposed to be in? Am I supposed to be in Pix's perspective right now? Or am I supposed to be in Alyssa's perspective right now? Or are they interchanging perspectives? It was very confusing for me. It made it hard to follow. Um, it wasn't clearly written or dictated to the reader whose perspective we should be in as we're reading the story. And that was a little it was a little disheartening because of that you know you think oh yay uh i'll be able to read this novel in a breeze and that's what i thought i'm like oh 129 pages i can read that in one night uh, i took me two nights when i've read novels way longer in under four hours you know i've i've i just wasn't entertained you know i wasn't grounded in the story Uh, i thought the pacing was a little off you know it's very slow and then it speeds up drastically near the end given all the um given the events of the ending you understand why but it's also an open-ended story you know it doesn't really resolve anything with alessa and sharon and the pigs you're just kind of like that's it there's there's no more and that was another disappointment. I'm like, okay. So now I want to know what's going to happen. You know, do these people live happily ever after? What's going to happen to the village? It's a very open-ended story. A uh, very open-ended novel. But it's also marketed as a standalone. So I'm unsure if there even is going to be a sequel. So I was also kind of disheartened. Because I'm just like, that's it? That's how you're going to leave it? Like, what? It wasn't as entertaining as I thought it was going to be with that ending especially uh it was really just kind of lackluster it fell flat for me unfortunately um it really disappoints me when a novel just doesn't pull me in the way I wish it would uh you know there were a lot of things that kind of instantly uh disrupted my enjoyment of it to be perfectly honest and yeah I mean that's that but like I always say you know this is just my opinion uh you may read the book you may like it Uh, a lot of people we are all very different we all have different tastes um so this was on wings and ash by joe holloway you can go ahead and purchase the book off of 
actually, I actually don't know if it's on bookshop.org. Um, oh, wow, it's not. Okay, so unfortunately you can't purchase this book off of bookshop.org. So, you know, my best, my second choice is always going to be Barnes & Noble. You know, you can also purchase it from Indie Bounds, Better World Books, Book Depository, uh, any of those places. But, you know, if you can't find it anywhere else, then go to Amazon, you know. But that's always my last resort because I love supporting bookstores and I love supporting booksellers and book websites. You know, Amazon just gets enough business as it is. I think bookstores need uh, our business as well. However, if money is not, if money is too tight, uh, which I know for a lot of us it is, you can go ahead and check out the book from your local library if they don't have it in their catalog. You can always recommend it. Uh, but, you know, the novel, I will say this, on Amazon, it is only $2.99 on the Kindle. And I'm pretty sure you can always return it if you don't like it, you know. But... There we go. That's that. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, happy reading. Mm -hmm.